Hello world and hello amazing Philippines. Welcome to our online class. And for today's lecture video, we're going to discuss about artistic and creativity literacy. But before we start, I am going to invite you to please subscribe, like and share, and then of course, leave a message in the comment section. This is again, Sir A, wishing you, of course, an enjoyable learning journey today. For our, of course, objectives, we have, of course, the following. So students, of course, have created clear understanding and characterize artistic and creative literacy, then describe the value of arts to education and practical life, and uh, identified approaches in developing designing curriculum that cultivates the arts and creativity among the learners. And we have formulated uh, a personal definition of creativity presentation design creative and innovative classroom activities for specific topic and grade level of students and uh, design and develop curriculum that cultivates the arts and creativity among learners. And for our value focus, we have of course consistency and uh, it talks about great reliability rather and of course uh, ability to maintain a standard. According to, of course, Albert Einstein, it is the supreme art of the teacher to awaken joy in creative expression and uh, knowledge. So therefore, of course, as a teacher soon, or supposing you're a teacher in health, of course, you have the responsibility to awaken joy in the creative expression and knowledge of our learners or students. And here, of course, you can see the artistic literacy as defined as the human right and teachable skill. I would like to again reiterate that uh, artistic literacy is a human right and teachable skill. And it is the ability to connect both personally and meaningfully to work so hard and through this process to forge connections to our humanity and of course the humanity of others. So it does not probably talk of our humanity, but of course, the humanity of others. And according to the National Coalition for Core Art Standards or the NCAS, artistic literacy is defined as the ability to understand and contribute to the broad milieu of art-related subjects, including, of course, the visual arts that talks about, of course, painting, pottery, drawing, and so on. Included also, okay, and the subjects are the theater arts musical arts, and of course, the dance. Students actively, of course, participate in these fields through physical engagement and creation as well as through reading and interacting with, of course, the source materials. And uh, we have, of course, here, things about, of course, the art. And uh, it is said that it is more than an escape from traditional classroom work. And um, of course, there are studies have, that have found out that uh, benefits, there are a lot of benefits from participation in the arts. And it includes, of course, the following. Number one is, of course, improve student performance on standardized tests. This, then the second one is stronger academic motivation. And of course, improve social skills. We have, of course, the importance of the arts, and it is summarized into these acronyms. So it starts with letter A. It talks about, of course, uh, academic achievement. Of course, there are hands-on experiences of implicit, implicit rather, deep learning and outperform peers. Then your R stands for respect for self and others. It's very important to, of course, respect with our own self and of course with others. So here, of course, uh, we connect and empathize with others as they understand and appreciate their own cultures, traditions, and symbols. Then we have, of course, training for life. Okay, comprehensively, of course, prepares them for the competitive and creative arena of the world 
work. And of course, um, S is for self-reflect expression. So of course, so we can express ourselves through our thoughts, of course, or there's a need for us to express our thoughts and feelings. Again, okay, the importance of the arts are a academic achievement, R is respect for self and others, T is for trainings, training for life, and S is for self-expression. We have actually 10 lessons okay, of uh, the arts uh, on how, of course, to teach by Eliot Isner of the National Art Education Association. So the first is, of course, uh, we have number one, or the first is the arts teach children to make good judgment about quality of, of course, relationships. Unlike uh, much of uh, the curriculum in which uh, the correct answers and rules prevail. So in the arts, it is judgment rather than, of course, the rules that prevail prevails. Again, the arts teach children to make good judgment. The second one is the arts teach children that problem can have more than one solution and that requires and that questions can have more than answers. I like this one. Okay, why? Uh, if, of course, um, we teach stud students or probably children that uh, we can, of course, solve our problems having more than one solution, it's better. So number three is the arts celebrate multiple perspectives. One of their large lessons is that there are many ways to see and interpret the world. It's very nice. Okay, so we need to have, of course, different or multiple perspectives, seeing, of course, and interpreting, of course, the world in many ways. Then we have, uh, of course, number four is the arts teach children that in complex forms of problem solving purposes are seldom fixed, but uh, change with, with circumstance and opportunity. The learning or learning in the arts requires ability and willingness to surrender to the anticipated possibilities of the work and it's, it unfolds. Take note, learning is the art. In the arts requires ability and a willingness okay, to surrender to the anticipated uh, possibilities of the work as it unfolds. Then number five is that the arts make vivid the fact that, that neither words in the literal form nor numbers exhaust what we can know. The limits of our language do not define the limits of our recognition. The number six is that the arts teach students that small differences can have large effects. The arts traffic in elusiveness. Again, small differences can have large effect. I am the believer of that. Okay. Then we have, of course, uh, number seven, the arts teach students to think through and within a material all art forms employ some means through which images become real. And number eight, the art help uh, children learn to say what cannot be said. When children are invited to disclose what a work of art helps them feel, they, much, uh, they must rather reach into their poetic capabilities to find the words that will do, of course, the job. Number nine is the arts enable us to have experience. We can have from no other source and through such experience to discover the range and variety of what we are capable of feeling. And lastly, the arts position in the school curriculum symbolizes to the young that adults believe is. Of, of course, again, the arts position in the school curriculum symbolizes to the young what adults believe is important. So that's, these are, of course, the 10 lessons the arts teach by Elliot Isner. Okay, and let's have, of course, the creativity. It is uh, being defined as the ability to both imagine original ideas or solutions to problems and actually do what needs to be done to make them happen. It is not just, of course, critical skills for artists or musicians, but an extremely valuable way of thinking about and being in the world. 
according to Fatima, Kayum, okay, creativity is, of course, um, the use of imagination or original ideas to create something, and it's from the or probably taken from the dictionary, and uh, to come up with a new, unique, original, surprising idea, and from an already an already existing thing, and should prove itself that is it is useful. Of course, what is best is that we need to produce new idea. And uh, the things that we can probably have with the new idea are the following. The first is, of course, product. Then we have, of course, we can create theory or we can produce theory. Okay, then solution to a problem of or of a, a problem, problem rather then concept on basis on which an art piece is created or created. Again, we have, of course, uh, having the new idea, there are things that can be achieved from the new idea, and this includes the following. We have, of course, a product, a theory, solution of a problem, and concept on basis which an art piece is created. So we have, of course, the characteristics of creative people. Let's check if you have, of course, the following. So if you have the following characteristics, then, of course, you are a creative person or people. Number one is are easily bored. Okay, then willing to take risks. The second, third is don't like rules. Okay, do you like rules or you don't like rules? Then ask what if, then make lots of mistakes, collaborate then they are, of course, generous. And creative people are, of course, independent, wanted or like to experiment, then motivate themselves, okay? Creative people are hard work or hardworking, okay? And uh, or they are, or they're, of course, work hard. They work hard, rather, and, of course, aren't alone. So these are, of course, the characteristics of creative people. Okay, let's have, of course, the types of creativity. Generally, we have, of course, uh, two okay, types of creativity. So the first here is, of course, uh, artistic creativity. Then the second one is cognitive creativity. In the artistic creativity, uh, we, of course, express feelings and emotions. Then there is, of course, the art for the sake of art. And then the end result is not known. Okay, then uh, the matter, there is, of course, a matter of subjectivity. Take a look with the picture or, okay, um, a painting that you can see probably. So if you're going to have that uh, paint, uh, you do not know, of course, um, what will the output. Okay, then we have, of course, the cognitive creativity. So in the creative, uh, creativity, focus more on the solution of the problem. Okay, be, uh, then useful and brings comfort and is in life with the cognitive. Then the end result is known. Of course, you have already in mind and have an option of flexibility. So that's it. Again, we have two types of creativity. The first is okay, artistic. Then the second one is, of course, cognitive. We have, of course, uh, four steps of uh, creative process. So the first is, of course, we need to define the problem. Then the second one is generating ideas. The third is we need to select the best idea. And of course, we need to have implementation. And let's have the difference between, of course, the creativity and, of course, artistry. So you can see here, of course, when we say creativity ability, so it is the skill and talent to use our imagination to create and solve. And then when we say, of course, artistic ability, it includes skills that uh, talent uh, and talent to create, of course, fine works of art like uh, painting, okay, drawing also included, uh, sculpting, musical composition, and etc. Let's talk about creativity ability. So you will probably hear, I can't draw or I'm not uh, creative when in reality being unable to draw or draw artistically 
is tightly related to artistic ability or lack of and not creativity. And we are all born creative and remain creative throughout life. Okay, creativity, of course, manifests itself in common day to day situations when we face mundane problems that, of course, require effective or effective solutions. And, of course, creativity is mental. Uh, it's why uh, it's the way, of course, a person thinks, solves, and finds solutions to a problem or a case. Then we have uh, the artistic abilities or artistic skills are born with a person, take note, born. So all of us, of course, will have, will have uh, or have the artistic ability. Okay, it is actually a talent and it's, it is mostly physically assessed. Okay, then these skills might, of course, uh, be weak as a start, but of course can be developed and practiced for perfection. For example, of course, drawing and illustrations. We need to practice no? so that we can be, of course, developed. Okay. Then artistic is basically being decorative. I like that one. It's very nice to know that uh, being artistic is being decorative. And art is not used in daily life. Okay, It is through which you communicate. Again, art is not used in daily life. It is through which you communicate. Let's have uh, the difference between, of course, uh, being creative and being artistic. So take a look with this illustration. Being creative is, of course, building a house. And being artistic is creating a house. While being creative is, of course, baking a yummy cake. Wow, I like yummy. And, of course, being artistic is baking a pretty cake. That's it. That's uh, the difference between the two. Okay, let's continue. We have here an artistic person can, of course, take uh, the alphabet and create a new type set for the characters. Take a look with the characters that we can create with the letters. Okay. And uh, on the other hand, uh, a creative person, of course, can design icons that uh, replace the alphabets. Take a look with, uh, of course, the icons that we have. Then, of course, we have this creativity, and it talks about uh, the following. So art is, of course, the expression of creativity. And the second is artists are conduits or channels for creativity. And, of course, if we are going to be teachers, we are also artists. And we are then conduits and, of course, channels for creativity. And we need to find ways to open up the door to express our emotions and ideas. But sometimes this is the problem because we are not opening no, our doors to express okay, our emotions and ideas. It's better to, of course, uh, to find ways to open up. Then arts are the basis of our creative expression as human being. So it's very nice. Okay, let's have, of course, does this question does. Uh, artist needs creativity. Okay, take a look at the, some examples of the, the pictures that we can have. Okay, artists, for example, painters, musicians, and dancers require both creativity and artistic ability, along, of course, with other things in order to complete their endeavor. I do agree with this. And creativity in this context is an added touch to the work in an artist does and of course clearly can improve the work dramatically. Then of course, for a lot of artists to create something, it requires a mix of artistic ability, talent, technique, and then personal style, and of course, creativity. And the next is of course, we have integrating and supporting the arts and creativity. So we have of course here, the first one is, of course, the physical environment. So we need to design a physical environment to support creativity. We need to re re rearrange uh, the furniture in your current campus, okay, or library or classroom to incorporate the concepts of the watering hole, the campfire, and, of course, the cave. Then the second one is emotional environment. So it takes time to create and maintain a, a climate of respect and caring. And that supports making mistakes. I like this one. Okay, we need to have 
a good emotional environment. So there is, of course, the climate of respect, caring, and it supports making, of course, mistakes. A uh, former principal told uh, us, okay, the man who makes mistakes, or again, the man who makes no mistakes makes nothing. Do you agree with this? Okay, this is very true. Again, the man who makes no mistakes makes nothing. So we need to be, okay, we need not to be, of course, afraid of uh, committing mistakes. But of course, it is great that after uh, committing mistakes, we need to learn, we need to probably change, okay, for good. And then we have, of course, number three is the project-based learning. So we need to introduce choice, freedom, and space for creativity. So as teachers, soon you need to introduce choice, freedom, and space for creativity. Like, for example, in our class, so you can see a lot of activities or performance tasks that we can have. So the PBL units you design should be relevant, rigorous, and real world in order to achieve, of course, the highest levels of student motivation, engagement, and learning. Again, I like that one. So in the PBL units you, you design or your design should be, of course, relevant, rigorous, and real world in order to achieve, of course, the highest levels of student motivation, engagement, and learning. Then we have, of course, teach creative thinking skills. So first, uh, teach students about metacognition, that is, of course, thinking about their thinking. And this concept about metacognition was uh, probably uh, uh, discussed with you in another subject. So you, you can, of course, teach that uh, to the little ones. Do they love, of course, being able to, to know such a big world? So teach, of course, them how to use the Edward you know, the bonus six thinking hats. And it talks about how to brainstorm, compare, contrast, problem solve, concept map, analyze, evaluate, and more. Okay. Again, of course, with uh, regards to Edward de Bono's six thinking hats, okay, we need, there's a need for us to brainstorm, to compare, to contrast, then problem solve, okay, then create concept map, and of course, analyze, then evaluate. Okay. Then we have, of course, um, scheduling. So in a project-based curriculum and performance-based assessment requires, of course, adequate time. So we really, of course, uh, requires adequate time in order to have, of course, uh, to produce um, best or quality output, we need to have, of course, adequate time for preparation and, of course, doing the task. So the most effective learning and teaching will take place when, of course, you create smaller learning communities Take note, a daily schedule of seven or more 45-minute class periods per day is absolute and a tema to creativity and learning. So we need to have, of course, the scheduling with our activities, of course, with our schedules, and many more. The number seven is student-centered and personalized learning. So we need to give students voice and choice as much as possible regarding what they will learn, how they will, of course, learn it, and how they will demonstrate what they have learned. Okay, it's very nice, no? Um, if we're, of course, giving only students the voice and the choice, okay, regarding, of course, with what they wanted to learn, how they will learn it, and how they will, of course, demonstrate what they have learned, the better. Okay, let's have, of course, uh, the next, number eight, incorporates the arts. Seamlessly integrate, of course, music, even art, drama, and, of course, dance into your project-based learning curriculum. Try not to make, of course, creativity time be separate from the rest of the curriculum. There is integration then, okay, of this. But let these, of course, disciplines becomes a vehicle for delivering the curriculum while, of course, developing creativity. Then number nine, you have, of course, integration of technologies, okay, wherein students create, of course, blogs and websites, Okay, even Glogster, voice thread, then student publishing, page, video, game design, coding, filmmaking, photography, global collaborative classroom projects, of course, uh, using Google Handouts. If you can see there is really the integration of technology with the activity of the student. Then we have, of course, uh,
Okay, number 10 is preparing the body and of course the brain for creativity. So you probably can offer to students and faculty opportunities for other events or activities like yoga, kishi, ballet, chess, and pilates or pilates. So that's it. So we need to, of course, prepare our body and of course the brain for creativity. We have also, of course, the seven habits of creative people. I like this one. This is by Antoinette uh, Seaman. So the first one is, of course, learn something new every day. If you are just probably positive and, uh, of course, you're willing to learn, this number one is very nice. Creativity actually happens when you make the efforts to learn and try something new every day. So every day we need to learn something. Then the second one is connect the dots. When you see, of course, the connection between facts, you're able to create something different. I like that one. So we need to connect the dots, whether probably in other times you fail, no? Okay, or probably you got low scores. But if we're going to connect the dot no? from the start until probably the end, there should be, no? Okay, a progress. Then see the potentials and make a list. So use a list as a place to see ideas before we get overrun by another wave of creative thought. Okay, then number four, don't don't shut the door on creativity. We need to continue. So you need to create now and edit after. That's nice. Create now and edit after. Who knows, of course, where your creative mind will go. Then we have, of course, keep a broad perspective. Okay, roll with, of course, the punches, adapt the, to the demands and carve out a new path by thinking outside in the box. So we need to have, of course, a broad perspective in life. You can say no a lot more than you think. So sifting out the stuff that doesn't work is just an important as keeping the things that do work. Okay, so sometimes saying no is also good. Okay. Then number seven is, of course, sharing your aha moments. Okay, so here collaboration is the key, developing and, of course, taking them places you hadn't thought of before. Okay, you will say, aha, okay, I have a new idea or probably new things in mind that probably can help us to become creative. Okay, for our references, you can have it here. Okay. Then you can probably use these references to search more information about our topic. And uh, for today, would like to say thank you. Okay, this is Surrey again, inviting you, of course, to subscribe. Then, of course, like and share okay, our video for today. And, of course, you can leave a message okay, in the comment chat box. Okay, thank you for today. I hope you learned something. God bless everybody. Bye-bye.